mosquito. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Fashion Design with Hannah. As I'm sure you know, as do I, that my trend reviews tend to go a little bit long. <laughs> and to help myself out and help, you know, all of my friends and family who feel obligated to watch my videos each time I post, I'm trying out a new format so that way it's shorter for you guys to watch and shorter for me to edit. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Before we get started, if you go ahead and like this video, especially if you like the new format, that'd be great. And if you are new here, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every couple weeks or so, and then talking about fashion news, trends, DIYs, and much more. And without further ado, let's get on to the trends for April and May in Ellen Vogue. So one thing that I found pretty interesting about the trends this time around is that there is a lot of shimmer and shine, and typically you do not see that outside of the holiday season, aka, you know, like December, January for holiday parties and whatnot. So I'm kind of happy to see some shimmer, shine, sequins, metallic embroidery going on. It's fun and exciting and I think that's the whole point behind it. People are excited to have events again as the world is opening back up and it is showing up in all the designs as well. So as you can see, we have it in all the different formats and I actually really like the giant palette skirt. I'm really curious to know how they did that. It looks fun and different. And we see all of this fun shimmer and shine represented in all different types of styles from the more work apparel to do day to night looks or just a little bit more of the fun flirty styles. And I am loving it. See, the great thing about this new format of just presenting one trend all together is that one, it's like how I do it for work. And so those of you who are training to become fashion designers, you know what you can look forward to in the office. And at the same time, you won't hear me say the same words over and over and over again as I pop them through the magazines. So we do have the oversized or voluminous silhouettes continuing. So we see it anywhere from jackets to shirt dresses, which I really like the one by Michael Kors. It has some great light summer vibes to it. And then we do see it represented in the dress category as well. And we still have it in the tops too. So it is everywhere. But there is one call out for this category and that is the oversized blazers. We did see this in previous months though. It is a continuing trend. Another continuing trend that we have going on is monochromatic outfits. They aren't going away anytime soon, so enjoy the view. And as this is spring and summer, we do see the light color palettes coming out for all white or all ivory outfits, but we also see some extremely saturated hue outfits. So that is bringing some life into the monochromatic category. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I love blue and green, so that means that I especially love teal. And this teal right here is really making me want this outfit so badly. And this kind of bright Kelly Green Bottega Veneta outfit that we see right here in the center, that is a color that I am seeing everywhere as well. And following that track of continuing trends, we have sheer play back on force. It did start to dip a little bit in previous months, however, it is spring and summer, so it is the time for the nice lightweight fabrics. However, we do have some slightly heavier representations of them with this dramatic skirt that you casually wear to the grocery store or corner store, of course. And I do love seeing this gorgeous evening gown and a blush hue on Amanda Gorman. I wouldn't mind wearing that myself to a fun event, maybe a ball, pretending that I'm going to go to a ball. <laughs> of course, it would also be fun wearing this hot pink one just to create a little bit of flair for drama as I walk around probably my house as I'm still working from home. <laughs> then we head on over to the prairie chic trend. It has kind of been ripped on all over the internet recently as it's not quite a mass market style. However, mass market stores have been pushing it like crazy the last couple months. So it's really funny to see it represented in Elle and Vogue. So it's usually categorized by some 
ditzy florals, super long maxi skirts, along with some ruffles or some smocking going on. Think running through a meadow in a dramatic movie style. You can also hear or see this represented in the cottagecore category as well. Now I do believe that is the last we have for continuing trends and now we're moving on to the new trends. And one thing that I've especially been seeing, not only because I am a knitwear designer currently, but there is a lot of warm weather knitwear. And I think part of that is coming from when Kendall Jenner wore that lilac cardigan with some cute embroidered flowers on it and then it took off on the internet people were looking all over for it even though it was an old style from that designer and there are a lot of people who are recreating it on youtube as well and it looks really cute so not only do we have warm weather knitwear and what's not really represented on this page is embroidered knitwear as well and what's interesting is that even though it's spring summer we are seeing some chunky knits too, like in this dress and kind of oversized polo top underneath the dress. I would not be wearing that on the day that I'm recording it, where we actually hit 92 degrees. I have also noticed that in this warm weather knit where we do also have some kind of woven looking knit patterns, like what we see in the lower left corner over here, and then a lot of fun cabling going on like what you see on Selena Gomez. And kind of in the same vein as the Prairie Chic, we see a lot of controlled fullness, aka pleats, gathering, smocking, ruching, etc. So we have a wide variety. Of course, Scaparelli is a famous designer for doing Bold, dramatic, voluminous styles that includes a lot of pleating. And so we do have some of those tops here. I do also like what they are doing over here with this skirt that has striped pleating. It looks so good. And I feel like even if she didn't have such a wide stance, it'd be very figure flattering. We are seeing this trend represented throughout evening wear, casual wear, and work wear. So take note if you are a current designer. Now, leisure is definitely not a new trend. However, it has been waning a little bit over the last year, so it is interesting to see it come back in this way. Also, this dress that has an athleisure influence is really interesting because that entire thing is diamond quilted, and then it also has the snaps going all the way down the center front. So it's interesting how it is a sleeveless dress, However, it is quilted, so it kind of implies that it would be worn during the warmer temperatures. However, that quilting is probably really warm, so I don't know when you would actually wear it. What I was also saying between both Elle and Vogue are cutouts, and that also isn't a new trend. However, I do like seeing the variations that we have now. We have the center front cutout, where it's under the bust and then goes to the waist. That one I'm seeing a lot just in general. And also these fun, funky like leg cutouts and waist cutouts. Those are really popular too. A new trend that I'm loving, but I honestly probably wouldn't wear myself simply because it's not quite my style, are the extra full skirts. It's almost like a return to like 1700s and 1800s volume. And these are obviously insane, more editorial style looks however they are kind of fun and inspiring and clearly some of them do have structures that are supporting them like you did have in the 1700s and 1800s however we are also seeing the lighter layered ones that could be for a slightly warmer weather just like shimmer and shine has its time during the holiday season lace crochets and eyelets all had their time during spring and summer so Clearly we are following on that trend just as florals do for spring. We do still have the broidery on glaze represented here and we are seeing it on Amanda Gorman's dress and she was looking absolutely lovely in it. And just as there is general shimmer and shine for the holidays, we do also have the other embellishments for that time period represented again right now. So as you're seeing, we have some embellished collars with beading, we have pearl embellishments, which I really like. Of course, there's usually faux pearls involved as well. And we still have the button grouping going on, as you see here with the overall. 
And what's really interesting about this hoodie on the right side is that it looks like there are zipper poles just kind of hanging off of it. Really cool concept, but definitely not something that would translate to real life as you'll be getting caught on everything, especially if you aren't me. Before we head on over to the colors, prints, and graphics trends that I've been seeing, there's one more trend that I'd like to show you, and that is the subtle logos. So nowadays it's not quite as cool to just have one giant logo on your chest. It is now being a little bit more discreetly added into outfits and accessories. Most of the time it's in the form of a distorted print with the logo. However, we are also seeing it knit into patterns and as you'll see on the right over here, there are actually the interlocking seas for Chanel being represented in the fabric. Although one could argue that this is Pantone's influence on the fashion world, we are actually seeing golden hues being more represented, anywhere from a little bit more of an ochre color to a bright, sunny, cheery yellow. I'm also seeing it across the board, from home goods to evening wear to casual attire. I also find it to be a nice, bright, uplifting color after the year that was 2020. In the prints category, I am finding geometrics everywhere. Anywhere from polka dots being revived to checkerboards. And as you see here, we even have checkerboard on camo, which, hey, that's kind of fun. There are also bandana prints that I am seeing, which is what we would consider ones that you would literally find on bandanas. So like placed paisley and squares and little geometrics inside of that as well. And of course, what is spring and summer without floral prints? I do not know. But we are also having some fun novelty, a little bit more abstracted prints thrown in as well, like what you see on the oversized coat at the bottom. It has what looks to be a leaf base filled with scratches on top of it. The other fun thing that I'm seeing in the novelty prints category are patchwork prints. So it's not actual patchwork, but the print looks like patchwork. The other thing that I'm seeing are some lively patterns and graphics. So patterns would be like stripes because they're physically woven into the fabrics. And we have some bright spring and summer colors to go with that. I believe it is Elle here who is seeing more of a fine line stripes. However, I always see stripes of every size. Not so many big chunky ones, but medium and small and everything in between. And as you see in the center, we have a fun collab between Moschino and Sesame Street, and I would like to think that part of that is from my brother's influence on the internet with Kermit, Elmo, Big Bird, and everyone else. We are also seeing the athleisure trends represented, again, slightly subtle logo with a Gucci here being forward and backward at the bottom. However, we are seeing Celine trying to push the big logo on the chest, but I don't think that that is as on trend as the subtle logos. All of those that I just showed you are the trends that I saw within the magazines, and if Elle or Vogue picked out their own little trend recaps that was in the magazine that fit those, I added those to those pages. So I'd like to also show you the other trends that they're seeing as well. On the left hand side here you will see the Han Fu style represented that is going on in China right now. It is the Han rulers influence style that was during the Tang, Song, and Ming dynasties. You see the intricate embroideries coming back along with the hairstyles and accessories as well. Now I definitely didn't see this represented but at the bottom they are showing some more animal prints that are there. Now I definitely didn't see this but some customer will want animal print year round and I feel like they needed to represent that. And as I was saying earlier, we do have monochromatic outfits along with bright saturated hues. And I love seeing this unique kind of fanned out style and what looks like a back detail here with the emerald. But what I do think is kind of funny about this uh, kind of middle bottom right trend recap is it's titled Take a Hike, but it's definitely not anything most people would wear on a hike. However, it is some cool looking clothing, so I'll give them that. And in the upper middle slash right hand ish side of the screen, you will see Nina Garcia's editor's pick. I love it how it feels kind of refreshing and something like I could wear it to the beach or maybe to a brunch, as if I actually went out for brunch. And in the lower right hand side of the screen, you will see a nice light grouping of pastel colors that I have seen represented across the board for late spring and early summer. And on the upper right, you'll see what they call Field of Dreams. So kind of Paris chic, but they're 
not fully going prairie chic. It's a little bit more um, mass market friendly. And that'll be all that I have for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, obviously not only to my friends and family, but to my random friendly friends on the internet, especially those who have DM'd me saying I am an inspiration to them, which I never thought would happen, and to those who have also messaged me saying that I have taught them something. That is really why I created this channel, and I do appreciate those messages. You know who you are who DM'd me. It really keeps me going, as this is a passion project of mine. You'd especially know that if you're on the other side of the screen, knowing that I'm recording in a room with no AC and no heat. Hopefully, I do not look like I have melted on the camera. Mini spiel aside, thank you so much again for watching, and as always, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Not only does this room not have AC nor heat, but I have to close the window, close the door, and turn off the fan in order to record. So I'm reporting live to you from Satan's butt crack. I am drenched. <laughs>